those things are uh, very, very brave. Um, Mr. Joyce, I don't know how to say goodbye to you. I feel like I just want to hang out here all day with you and talk to you. Uh, I'm, so the next person that's coming up is Vincent Finetti, and I'm kind of hoping he's late because if he is, then we can keep going here. Do you know Vincent, by the way? Have, have you guys Absolutely. ever worked together before? I was in his fan club a long time ago, too. There was no training in our industry at one time, and he was the first one to really put the time and effort. He was a groundbreaker like you. And I was a yeah, big fan that's of one of the things that I wish our industry, even to this day, had more of. He is, uh, there's just not a lot of guys that are out there doing that. And our industry is so small, it's hard to like create that ecosystem because uh, there's so many small, small businesses. But yeah, you're right. Vincent's been out in front of this thing since the beginning, and he's just a great all, all around dude. So he is the guy kicking you off. But luckily, uh, I think he's coming on right now, and it's going to be one of these like Italian. He's going to make you feel good about getting knocked knocked away from here, Mr. Joyce. Let's see if he's on. Vincent, how are you? Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? Do you hear that? It doesn't feel Excellent. good. Excellent. Mike, how are you? I'm Mike, great. How are you? Mike. You know, Mike so, is one of the reason Yatsis Academy is out there. I want to say a few years ago, I sent the first newsletter to, to the industry, and Mike was the first to respond, to encourage me, and he's one of my best mentor in the yachting industry and i'm so grateful to be right after him if no, you do what Vincent and tells you it's money in the bank folks <laughs> Thanks, no, my it, friend. the amount of ideas that come out of mr joyce are unbelievable and if you listen to yes this, percentage of them you'll be a smarter better person can, can i let you guys talk for a second because i have to take another bathroom break uh, yes. and grab some coffee and water you guys just talk to each other and uh Absolutely. Be back in about two or three minutes mike how are you I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I was actually sad to be right after you because I'm like, I'm not going to have a chance no. to talk to you. But now I'm, I'm with you. The book that you recommended is fantastic. I read it. I love Peter Diamandis. Thank you so much for recommending that book. Good. You always give amazing idea. And uh, I'm so glad to have seen the, the whole interview with you, uh, with you. And I'm so happy to, to see you here. Well, tell me something. What... What's been the response over the last five years? I know that you started off with some of the really big companies and they signed up yes. and they put it in their companies. Have they have they followed up on it? Do you see them putting an annual program in place? Because training is something, I'm from a generation, if you didn't go to some training this year, what are you stupid? Why don't you just, and I know so many people haven't read a sales book, haven't, haven't been to a training center, haven't done anything. That's yes. why, Bob, I recommend it. I, I don't know. Do you know Tom Ferry? Have you seen his? Uh... I do. I do. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm also following real estate and trying to be uh, to, to pay attention to different type of industry. I think so much of what they do does apply. Not all of it, for sure. But exactly. Lot, and and very often, yeah. very often, the people that bring um, the, the new thing in an industry are outsider. They, they come from all the type of industry. If you look at Uber, the guy wasn't a taxi driver. He was a developer. Same for Airbnb. So if you pay attention to what's going on yes. outside our industry, I think we can get some good ideas and try Absolutely. to implement them in, in the boating industry. I'm and right now, as you said, it's very important to have the right mindset. It's very important to invest in yourself, trying to be the best version of yourself to help your clients. And that's why I admire what a lot of people are doing in the industry right now to work very hard trying to help their clients. How are you guys doing? We're, we're so small, you know, it's easy for us. I mean, we don't have the logistics or the problems with factories that other people, we do six boats. That's a huge year for us. So, I mean, that's, that's different business. We're in the service business. And I tell people our first job is every morning we get up and talk about service and most yes. people get up and talk about sales. And then after we get through that list, assuming we do, they go, Oh, by the way, is anybody thinking about a heart rate and what can we do for them too? So by taking care of those people, we've always had the reorders. We, we, Last week, one of our clients gave us another order for a third boat that they've done with us. Let me give you an example of what service is. Service is when a guy named Jim McGurk comes to the boat show in Lauderdale. And this is back at the bottom of the recession, probably 2008, 2009 in Lauderdale. He goes, how's business, huh? I said, well, it's all right. He said, no, it isn't. Is it? No, I said, no, it's not. He says, it sucked. I'm like, oh, yeah. He says, I bet you're close to desperate by now, aren't you? I said, well, since you brought it up, he goes, that's what I thought. He says, get something ready and send it to my office. I'll sign it. And then walked away. I swear to God. And I said to Mike D, did he say what I thought? He said, he goes, yeah, he did. We sent it up. He goes, 
there. Keep going. You're doing the right stuff. So those people are out there. Our customers love us. If you're taking care of the, when I grew up, my father said, remember this. And you don't have to remember anything else. If you always take care of the customer, he says, I mean, always. He used to drink when he's doing it down on the table. And he says, if you always take care of the customer, the customer always takes care of you. Yes. My whole yes. life has been the case. And to talking about customer, I wanted to recommend the book also. I, I brought a couple of books. That you oh, recommended right. a great book. I wanted to recommend this book. And especially right now in this time. It's a, an amazing book, Raving Fans, Absolutely. and it's all about being obsessed about customer service, being obsessed about taking care of your client. And I think this book is more relevant than ever in a, in a period like that. So I also wanted to add an addition to the reading list of all of you guys today with a great recommendation. Good for my you. Vincent, and good to see you. Goodbye, kiddos. See you, Mr. Joyce. Have a good one, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Talk soon. You're welcome. Thanks so much for everything. Absolutely. Vincent, how are you? I'm fantastic. How about you? So where in the world are you? I feel like you're one of those friends I have every single time I go into Facebook. You're in some crazy corner of the world. So right now, luckily for me, I'm at home. I'm in, so I live in Vancouver Island. It's in Canada. It's close to Vancouver. It's a big island in front of Vancouver. It's big. We have like around half a million people living in Vancouver Island. I've been living here for the last 12 years. It's, it's amazing living here. It's a paradise. And uh, so I'm very happy, very fortunate, very grateful to be here with my family, my wife and two kids. And um, you're, you're Italian. How did you end up in Canada? So I'm French. Uh, people right, what I can recognize my accent. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm French, but I have an Italian name. Yeah. And I, I ended up in Canada. I was traveling around the world for a year and a half. My girlfriend, uh, who is my wife today, Jenna, is uh, Canadian. So that's why I moved to Canada 12 years ago. Okay. And since I came here, I never left. Um, it's a wonderful place to be, and I absolutely love it. It's difficult for me to travel because I always travel all around the world. So it's very far. It's very remote. But I love being here. And so you actually get to Vancouver Island. Obviously, it's an island. So you're taking a ferry there, right? So to go to Vancouver Island, there is different way you can do it. You can take the seaplane. And usually, most of the time, I will take the seaplane. You can take the helicopters. Once in a while, I will take the helicopter. You can take the ferry. Or you can take the regular plane. So the island is very well deserved. But most convenient for me is the seaplane. Seaplane terminal is like five minutes from my house. I will go there. And within 15 minutes, I can be at the, at the main airport airport in, in Vancouver. I love it. We got to talk quickly because there's some yacht brokers watching right now that are working in a scary yes, environment. Yes, that helps your brokers. Yeah, you are one of those guys that yacht brokers go to when they're like, I need a new idea. I'm freaking scared. I want to be inspired. I want to be motivated. They tune into you. Sometimes they just watch your videos. Sometimes they call you. Sometimes they text you. Uh, but they're in some way reaching out to you. What is your message right now to people that are trying to make a living selling boats in a weird, scary environment like this? So the message is you need to ask yourself the right question. The most important, the quality of your life will depend on the quality of the question you ask yourself. And some people in, in a moment of change like this are going to ask themselves, why is this bad thing happening? Some people will ask themselves a different question. They, they're going to ask, is this a bad thing or good thing that is happening right now? And the problem when you ask yourself a question like this is, very often the negative is going to win because the way our brain is wired, our brain is wired to focus on the negative things. That's why we focus on the news. That's why we always tend to focus on the negative thing in our life because uh, it's a survival mechanism. More we were cavemen, if you go outside of the cave and you have a beautiful flower on the left and a lion behind the bush on the right, if you would focus on the flower, chances are the lion jump on you and you will be dead. So it's a protective mechanism to focus on the negative. Right. And also people, they ask themselves, why is this a positive thing? Why is this a good thing? Why is this a blessing? And that's a question you need to ask yourself. It's an opportunity to change. It's an opportunity to, to become a better person. It's an opportunity to build a better business. It's an opportunity to change and, and, and evolve your business, which you guys are doing right now. You are and that's really, really important. So the mindset and the question you ask yourself are very important, despite the fact that it's, yes, of course, it's very difficult right now, very challenging, but we are all in the same boat and you must focus on positive. Well, I like it and I would expect nothing less of you. I do want to, what you said, I agree with, but what I want you to deliver a message to is the broker that just heard that and he was like, great, Vincent, I'm going to be positive, right? Like, I get it. 
I've been around you long enough. I, but what are give give them some practical things to do today to reach out to a client? How do you even start a conversation to a client about a boat or a leave out a boat? What are some things you can do practically, email or on the phone or engagement wise to reach reach out to clients? So there are two words. Number one is empathy. You need to address the situation. You need to address the elephant in the room. You cannot just sell as is and not pretend that nothing is happening. So number one is empathy, Very caring about your clients, caring about their situation. But the second thing, and I think it's one of the most important things, is vulnerability. And vulnerability is telling your clients that, hey, we are being affected. Our industry is, be is being hit fast, the hardest. And But you know what? Despite that, I love my job. I'm so grateful I work in this industry and I'm going to have your back. So if you want me to check your line, if you want me to go and wash your boat. I had some 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 students from Yatsis Academy. They took their pressure washer and they went and they washed the boats of the clients. They went and washed the boat of clients because they had nothing to do. And I'm like, yeah. you know what? Congratulations. That's what you want to wow. do. Inaction is not going to do nothing for you. But maybe if you wash that client's boat, if you go check the battery charger, if you go to check their lines, they go at some point they're going to reward you for that and at some point they're going to give you business maybe you cannot sell boat right now because maybe we're on lockdown we cannot do a sea trial we cannot do a survey but you can plant the seeds care for your clients and you can make sure that serves them the best you can and they will reward you they will give you business in the future and yeah. that's i think the main message i've been trying to give people is i know it's difficult right now it's difficult for everybody but this is a time to give. You got to be hundred percent, and yeah. and th that's the most important thing to do right now. That's kind of one of those things. You held up that book, Raving Fans, which is such a good book. You do things like that. That's what creates a holy shit. You're not going to believe what my yacht broker did for me today. Moment where somebody's going to start to share their experience with their friend and talk to them and say, "This guy." And it has any excuse not to pick up the phone, call me, not to go see my boat, not to wash it, not to check my boat and take a picture and let me know how it's doing because I'm far away. You're not going to believe what this guy has done for me in an environment like this. Exactly. It's the perfect time to create a raving fan because you yes. don't want to. We sometimes get like caught up in the short term, like I just want to get a boat sold. But the power of creating somebody that says, I can't believe what this freaking guy did to take care of me. Yes. I need to tell you about it is with a part where referrals come in, credibility is built, and those lifelong relationships are birthed. Yes, and, I, and I'm going to share something very profound that Mike Joyce shared with me many, many years ago. And every time I shared it with his clients, he, he, he had a big, big impact. And with students, he had a big impact. One day, Mike told me, he said, you know, Vince, do you know the only one car companies that increased car sales during the, the previous recession? So I'm thinking, I'm like, no. And he's like, there is only one company in North America that increased car sales. And I'm, so I was curious. I'm like, which one is that? And he says, Hyundai. And he's like, do you know why? I'm like, no. And then he asked me, he said, do you know the biggest fear people have during, during the recession? I'm like, I don't know, to land security or things. He's like, it's to lose a job. Right. That's the biggest fear people have. And what Hyundai did is when they were selling the car, they implemented an insurance program. It was called the Hyundai insurance program. So in the unlikely event that you would lose your job, they would stop the lease for a couple months. So you could go find another job or they will eventually cancel the lease and you will not lose any money or that will not impact your credit. Very few people ended up using that insurance. But just the fact to implement it, there was the only car company that were that increased uh, car sales in the previous recession. So yeah. the idea is don't focus on your product, focus on your clients. You yeah. have to focus on your clients and don't focus on your product. Be obsessed yeah. about your client, be obsessed about serving, be obsessed about customer service. They come back to one of my favorite quotes from Howard Schultz, it said, the CEO of Starbucks, he said, we're not in the coffee business serving people. We are in the people business serving coffee. And awesome. this is the same philosophy we need to have in the boating industry. We are in the people business. Let's serve all those people. Let's do our best. And remember, boats is, boats are relevant right now. You're not selling boats. You're selling fresh air. You're not selling boats. You're selling social distancing. You're not selling boats. You're selling the guy's been you know, inside his house with his family for months. They just want to get out. They just want to go on. Boats are relevant. 
today. Yep. And this is the, the message I want to give people is really be obsessed with your client. That's an awesome message to end on, Vincent. It is a really, really cool thing for us to just leave and be encouraged with. Those are some other just really good ideas. You are a French guy with an Italian name that lives in Canada and serves customers in the United States of America. Uh, you're one of those global sort of examples of what our world looks like today and what our in industry looks like today. And I've never, ever once hit the docks at a boat show and not run into you and walked away like more pumped up and just more positive and excited about being. Likewise, the likewise. So, thank you very, very much. Thank for you the so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for putting this together. I think it's a great example for, for the industry and have all a wonderful day. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vincent. See you later, man. Thank you so much, Bob.